I'm Christian Chiller and on this channel and in my blog I have frequently looked at tools and practices related to tech writing. It's something I've spent a lot of the past 10 years doing. This has included um, plugins, it's included IDEs, it's included different types of markup language and much more. And in this video I'm going to take a look at ASCII doc which I have covered a little bit before but not too much. What is ASCII doc? Well it's actually older than Markdown and dates back nearly 25 years now, in 2002. It's quite comparable to other markup languages like Markdown and Restructured Text in that it provides simple formatting to delineate particular pieces of text with a focus on kind of technical and academic writing because it lets you do things like formula, file includes, code blocks, etc, etc. It's a little more standard and pure than something like Markdown, which is famous for having many different flavors, meaning that if you remember one piece of syntax, you can use it almost anywhere. And it's also very good at exporting to other formats through common tool chains like ASCII Doctor. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the basic and more intermediate syntax that you can use in ASCII Doc projects. And I'm going to be using a new IDE editor specific for ASCII doc called ADOC Studio. If you want to find out more about ADOC Studio, you can follow the link above. If you want to find out more about me, you can take a look at christianchiller.com and click on any of the links below this video if you want to show how much you enjoyed it. Always appreciate it. Okay. Let's get started. First, I'm going to look at headings. ASCII doc uses these equal signs to determine the level of the heading. So this is level one. And then if we come down here, we have level two, level three, level four, et cetera, et cetera. I'm showing the preview here in ADOC Studio. If I changed a different style, you would see uh, different things and you could determine how this looked by changing some of the style guides here. But I'm just gonna stick to the default. Now a paragraph of text is pretty expected, pretty normal. This is a comment. This is to remind me to say something. So just two forward slashes here. There we go. So you don't see it in the preview. And here we have some formatting for bold, italic, highlighted, and of course there are many more. If you're not sure what these are, there's a couple of different ways we could find them. So up here on the menu, bold, italic, marked, and monospaced, etc. Or of course you can just enter the changes yourself and you get the instant preview here. And likewise, if I remove that from there, it's not italicized anymore. Now let's have a look at different types of a list. I'm actually going to start down here. So this is your sort of standard unordered list. You can actually use the hyphen or the asterisk. You can see there's an asterisk there and a hyphen there. And in both cases, they get rendered the same way as an unordered list. And an ordered list is just a number followed by the dot and it gets rendered that way. Now, fortunately, with something like ADOC Studio, if I just hit enter after the last item, it pre-fills the numbers for you. You don't have to keep tabs of where you're up to. If I kept going there, for example, it even prompts you where to fill in and we can just type and focus on our writing. Another type of list is the one up here and this is with the double colon after the word and this makes a description list as you can see here. So it doesn't really render quite the same way but if we hit enter again then you also get this assistant here. So for example and keep going. This is also one that if you hit the escape key and start typing description. If you can't remember the syntax, you will get it in the assistant here. And there we go. Same with the ordered list here and also the unordered list. And in this particular case it actually lets you set different sorts of style as well. If you click to it, you can change the type of bullet that's shown. So we go square, for example, and you see that there. I can do the same thing here and even start on a different number. So I'm going to start on three. We'll go for Greek numbers. There we go. I don't even know what the, if that's correct. <laughs> should probably use a number system I'm more familiar with. But I'm assuming if I change this, the value changes. So 
I will trust that, that is working correctly. Let's take a quick look at links. So pretty much all you do is you add the link itself and then in square brackets next to it, the link text. And by default, if I start this again, you'll see that already a bare link is recognized here and rendered as a link. So basically just overriding the link text. There we go. There's one other type of link, which is an internal link. So you can see here in this particular case, you use these angle brackets to the left and to the right on the close. You select the heading you want to, or the anchor, it can be uh, different ways, but by default, often this is headings and then the text you want to display there. So let's start another one here. And we can already see that it's picked up the other headings in the document. Um, there we go, let's go for that one. And voila. Another common thing people often want in technical documentation is images. We can see, yes, the end result. It actually says up here, it's like I planned it this way. In this particular case, you use some double colons again here and then set the file name. I'll come back to that in a second, plus any extras you want to add. So actually, if you're doing this from within ADOC Studio, you get a couple of extra helpers along the way. So I'm gonna hit escape, get the image up. And in the case of the file name, it'll either pick up what's located up here. And you can see I have this file here. So I'm just gonna pick that. And I can go for various options, like uh, size, alignment, caption, alt text etc etc so this is a terrible alt text but we'll go for that you could also just drag this in there and you get basically the same thing but without the extras so we'd have to go and add those ourselves here by hitting escape and then on we go with various aspects here and in this particular case i could also set an id and we can come back up here and you can now see the image is also available there to be linked to, which is a bit of an odd use case for an internal link, but <laughs> still. We also have tables here. So this is a table with a header and you see you get the rendered header row here plus the data. If I remove this text here, we get a normal table rendered. But if I add this with the space, if I remove the space, then it's just three rows. If I add the space back, we get a header row. And if you do that, nothing happens. It's clever enough to know that. <laughs> you can't trick it. And you can add some sort of custom formatting to a table by adding some angle brackets here. And we can say things like, so no grid, for example, which will get rid of all the lines in between. Or we could say just rows and we get them there. And likewise, frame is also equal to none. And then you get rid of the outer edge. So if we did none and none, it's like making websites 20 years ago, use tables for layout. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. One of my favorite features is always single sourcing content. And we can do this with the include directive here, which is a double colon one. And you can see I have some content here, which is coming from this file. So within ADOC Studio, let's see how we can do this. We can hit escape, type include file. It's showing us what we can include. And there we go. And this square bracket shows you there's a few things we could override. I will come back to that another time. Okay, now let's jump through to some more complex things we can do. This is basically the same file, but I'm gonna add a few things. So at the top here, we have attributes. You can think of these as variables, basically. So I set a name or a key and then a value, and I could add some more. And you can see an attribute here, so the definition and the reference. So I'll come to the reference in a second but we could say I added this mid tier and we're basically setting what we're calling it. I'm not gonna use that one for anything right now, but then we can see using again, hitting escape and the reference and being able to pick the options. You can now see that they get used here. Now this is just a random print, so it's set here. These I'm actually using as that definition list. So you can see 
you can use the variables in place of many other things. It doesn't have to be just text. I'm using, well, it is text, but it's in a list. Yeah. You could use it as part of another directive where I have these double colon is my point. And if I say, no, we are changing the free tier, not from beginner, we're calling it free, then everything is updated in one place. We don't have to keep changing the instance of that text in multiple places. And equally, I've used them down here in the header of the table. So yes, you can use them in multiple places. Now that's well and good. Where things get a bit more interesting is, I've got a whole other page here. There's a whole bunch of things coming here, but let's focus on the one that is most interesting, platform Mac OS. So down here we have some logic. If the platform is equal to Mac OS, we show, this is the text that's actually being showed here. There's a lot going on here. And if it's set to Windows, then we show this. So let's unpack this. Firstly, this is using the menu syntax, which again, you can access from the little pop-up here to define that it's semantically a menu. And we're going to say on Mac OS, it's the application menu and then the open option. And if it's Windows, it's the open menu and the application option. So at the moment it's showing application open because up here it's set to Mac OS. And if we change it to Windows and scroll down, you'll see it's now different. I'm gonna keep it as Mac OS. And this here is if statements. So if this, end, if this, end. ASCII doc doesn't have a concept of else's like you might have seen in other uh, programming languages and tools. It's just ifs, basically. Let's have a look at the top of this document and these three items here. Now, these are predefined attributes. They're not the same as this one down here that we defined ourselves. These are predefined by ASCII doc. And in this particular case, they're making the text align to justification, making the text align with justify, I could change it to write and equally with these as well. I mean, this affects this, the admonitions. I'll come back to that later. Now, there's a lot of these in ASCII doc. You could, of course, just remember them all or you can helpfully hit escape in ADOC Studio, open up this top line here and you get the long list of them all with a little bit of help text, which is very helpful. So you know, title, for example, there we go. Just got rid of that and onwards and onwards. There's quite a lot here. What is this? This enables equations and formulas. And that is useful down here where we have formulas and equations rendered correctly here. So if this wasn't enabled here, I'll take this out, let's comment it then you'll see it gets rendered rather oddly, kind of like code, sort of. This has no actual effect. But if we re-enable that and scroll down, we see as we expect it to see. Likewise, if I get rid of that, it's also just the, the plain text. And again, we can add some other attributes into there. Now, one of the most important parts in technical documentation is code. Well, I mean, we could argue that, but it's important, especially in certain types. So what you can have with ASCII doc, there's a couple of different ways. I'm showing two here. And again, if you're not sure what they are, you can hit the escape key and get up the different options, multiple paragraph or single paragraph. And then the syntax is a title, setting it the source, the language, and these four dashed lines for a block or no four dash lines for just a single line. Anyone who is used to seeing other markup languages and renderers will say this doesn't look quite right. This is in gray, this is in yellow. And actually if we hover over here, yep, you can see to enable source highlighting, define the source highlight attribute in the document header. And actually in the issues, it says the same thing here. So this is much like with the formulas we need to add an extra attribute here. And there it is, I can pick it here. And now if we scroll down, this looks 
much better. It's actually got highlighting for the language and no more yellow and no more issues. Excellent. Now let's come back. Another semantic element is a button. In this particular case, it's just rendered in these angled brackets. If you use the style sheet, this could be rendered in, in different ways, of course. And finally in this section, one of my favorite things alongside file inclusion is admonitions, pop-ups, alerts, whatever you want to call them. So this is sort of similar formatting here. You have like the, the, the top, which is with this little dot, this full stop here, the type, and then the text. So another way to do this, yeah, it's right at the top, admonition, after hitting escape, and we can see the type we want it to be. Let's go for multiple paragraphs. Let's go for tip. And we have this delineating the multiple paragraphs. And we can do, for example, and for a single one, we just get rid of those. So you'll see something similar to earlier with the code. This is included, but the others are outside because it's only considering the first line. And we could change the title here. There we go. And there's obviously a lot more here. And many of these are available behind this handy escape button for adding things you may not know about or adding things you've forgotten how to, et cetera, et cetera. And that was, shall we say, my getting started ultimate guide to ASCII doc, looking at some of the basic and intermediate syntax that you may use is of course much more. If you want to know more about ASCII doc, then take a look at the link above. If you want to know more about ADOC Studio, then take a look at the link above. If you want to know more about me, take a look at the link below. Surprised you there. If you enjoyed the video, then please rate, review, share, and support or join the channel using any of the links on the player below or leave a comment. I have been Christian Schiller. Thank you very much for joining me and take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.